What's up everybody, Roger and Victoria here from the Disking the Podcast and in this episode we're going to be talking all about the D23 Expo lineup of the panels which they've announced, which I kind of have a feeling these are like the, the major ones that they've announced. Luckily for Victoria, she's going to be at the event, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly run through the basic idea of what they are and then we can kind of go through them in a little bit more detail. So on the Friday, July the 14th, we have got the Disney Legends Award Ceremony followed by the Disney Animation Studios and Pixar Animation Studios panel, where they'll be talking about Wreck-It Ralph, Coco, Incredibles 2. Uh, Saturday 15th, we've got the Walt Disney Studios live action films, followed by the Walt Disney uh, Parks and Resorts. And on the sat Sunday, we have got the whole new world um, of Alan Menken. So what are you looking forward to seeing there out of them? Uh, well, definitely the Disney Legends Award Ceremony. That's going to be the kickoff for the whole entire expo. I'm, I'm super excited to see that one. Of course, the um, panel in, in charge of the parks uh, and the live action films for sure. Yes. Um, the thing, I think it's again, I mean, like you said here, that obviously at the ceremony, we've got like Stan Lee, we've got Oprah Winfrey, we've also got um, uh, Mark Hamill and also Carrie Fisher and other ones that have kind of gone off my head. Which were the other ones? Can you remember? Um, there's one who's done Broadway production. Yeah, oh, The Lion King. I think she did, didn't she? Yeah, whose name escapes me. Uh, a few, um, a few Imagineers that are um, no longer with us as well. But yeah, um, yeah, yeah, that's I, about. I, I think I, I can got, remember. I, I think I got all the all the all the like the, all the more well known ones. Um, obviously we've got the animation studio and Pixar one, so they're going to be showing off, as I said, Wreck It Ralph two, Coco Incredibles two, which wasn't listed on that list of of movies. Um, and Co it's so that should be quite interesting. I'm the fact that they're saying Incredibles two maybe means that one's a little bit more closer to a reality than. Uh, we think maybe that's going to be sliding in at some point. That one should be rather cool. I remember that, um, quite a few times people get to see a little bit more of early footage at these shows of some of the test footage and some of the early things. So hopefully you'll see a little bit of a sneak preview on this one. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm really, really looking forward to it. I'm praying I see something regarding Incredibles 2 because I've been wanting to see a sequel to that movie for years and years now. I really hope I see something. Yeah. No, it should be good. It should be um, definitely an interesting one. And also... Um, I mean, I know, like, before, you know, people saw, um, Abe, he saw, like, clips of, like, um, Moana and, yeah, I think even Gigantic and stuff, so it, is, it should be a while off. Um, on the Saturday, we have the live-action movie ones, which is going to include Beauty, uh, it says here we're going to see what movie is going to come out. Now, they've pretty said, well, last time they got to see clips of Force Awakens, Beauty and the Beast, Doctor Strange. So, this one could be all over the place. Um, I'm guessing you're going to see some last, The Last Jedi maybe some stuff from the um from the Marvel ones, um, such as Thor Ragnarok would make a lot of sense. Um and then maybe even Spider oh, no, Spider Man will just come out then. But yeah, I would expect and even Mar Mary Poppins could be. Yeah, possibly Mary Poppins, because I believe that comes out next uh next winter. Yeah, Christmas Christmas um, 2018, I think it is. So and obviously these D twenty three expos are every two years, so there isn't gonna be one next year at all. Yeah, so it, it will make sense for them to show films that are coming out within the next two years. Yeah, so that one, sh that one should be very cool. Um, earlier this um, week, there's an episode going up where we were talking about all of the future upcoming movies. So I'm guessing everything that we kind of talked about in that episode could very easily be shown off with little... I won't going to say trailers, because it's going to be more just unfiltered content. Whether or not it gets streamed and we can see it online. Because sometimes, with, especially with the movie ones, they don't like showing us what's going on on sort of bad cell phone versions yeah that's yeah that's very true those yeah. obviously get leaked no matter what they say yeah it's so, a lot, I mean, it's a lot harder yeah. it, then i'll try and live stream it but we'll see <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm gathering on some of these there they'll be like no phones um so then we've got our walk disney parks and resorts um now this one is going to be quite interesting and it also says what's coming around the globe now personally I would, at this point here, the full buyout of Disneyland Paris will have gone ahead because that's recently got the go-ahead. Um, so that's obviously going to be a big thing. There was rumours recently of, or well, not even rumours, they kind of announced that they're going to be doing lots of investments for Disneyland Paris. So lots of Marvel stuff. I would not be surprised if that got revealed at uh, this event because that seems like a great place to do it. It's a shame they don't do D23 over here on the other side of the pond every two years, but... Nevertheless, I think that will be a good a good point to announce some stuff there. 
Yeah, I'm almost positive they're going to be talking about um, the Star Wars Lands updates. They're definitely going to talk about the Marvel-themed land. I, I can't remember if that was rumored or if it was confirmed, but I do remember them saying something about expanding Marvel in California Adventure. So I'm positive they're going to talk about that, probably talk about the gondola system. Yeah, um, Toy Story, like, oh, Story Land as well. Oh, yes, that too. Yeah. Um, and also they've been talking a little bit more of doing some buyouts of Hong Kong. I wouldn't be surprised if once they've sort of finished off with the Disneyland Paris full buyout, they start working then on the Hong Kong one, they kind of get full control back. Um, but yeah, as you said, Marvel would make a lot of sense. And also, if they can integrate it with using the technology and whatever they're building, they can kind of almost share them with Paris and you share out that development costs. Um, I always think it makes a lot more sense to have attractions on both sides of the Atlantic, on both sides of the things. And, you know, they're far enough away. I mean, we don't even get promoted for Disneyland over here. So it would make sense to kind of do that. Um, yeah, I can. Oh, in Tokyo, too. They're also building new lands in Tokyo as well. Yeah. So they're probably going to touch base with that and the view castle being built in mm. Hong Kong. Oh, yeah. They, oh, yeah. I forgot about it. There's, there's a yeah. lot going on. Um, I mean, whether or not they announced the big plans for Epcot, I'm really not sure if they do that now while they're doing Star Wars land. But um, that's got to be coming up soon. I mean, they're yeah, gonna obviously going to be touting yeah. the what they've done with Avatar Land and you know Star Wars Land, but whether or not they hold off Epcot, but you know, the future worries looking a bit um, glim. If they even if they just, it's like I said, it's two years. They can't really come out and just say, oh, "Well, we're doing more Star Wars." Like they're going to need to announce something for Walt Disney World. Yeah, they're going to have to, and if they do, I feel like it's either going to be Tomorrowland or Epcot because Tomorrowland definitely needs an update, and especially they're probably going to have to address those rumors about the Tron coaster going into Tomorrowland as well and what they're going to do with Epcot as it's the only park that hasn't gotten an upgrade yet. But also with so much stuff at Epcot closing down, I mean, all the stuff with the Universe of Energy, the innovations West and East are pretty much sort of empty, uh, you know, mission, mission to space and all this kind of stuff. Um, there's been a lot of rumors and stuff, and obviously it's the last one on the list because Magic Kingdom or Animal Kingdom is really getting the upgrade this year. Magic Kingdom had loads for the uh, fantasy land. So Epcot does see next. It would make more sense for them to do that at that uh, panel. So hopefully we should expect to see a little bit on that one. Yeah, Epcot needs some love, so I'm yeah. hoping so too. <laughs> and just more Marvel. Bring more Marvel in. Just pay off the yes, universal. Yes, the more Marvel, the merrier. I, yeah. Like, I cannot express. Just bring me more Marvel. Yeah, that's it. You know, I mean, if we have, you know, I mean, I'd be fine with getting rid of Tomorrowland and putting it in a Marvel Land, but I'd rather have a whole new park. But that's, I know that would not be so popular. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I can't see it happening. So. No. <laughs> and I just say, just, just turn, let's turn the whole of future world into Tony Stark, into Avenger world. And, you know, fans are going to love that. You know, we could or even just turn the Epcot ball into the Death Star. That would be good as well. And just, you know, go the full hog and just kind of really just go, yeah, we're changing it. They need to hire you as an imaginary yeah. interview. <laughs> <laughs> How popular that that it's like. I, I always just think back to that video when Rogue One came out, where they used the depth, and it's just like they should do that. It would make more. It would make more sense to do that spaceship Earth as the Star Wars like night show than just using it over the Chinese theater. It just would make more sense. Yeah, it would. It really would, and people would love it. That's a perfect use of projection mapping. Yeah. So now that's that's my little thing, and then finally on the Sunday we've got a whole new world of Alan Macon who um has done a is one man show. I think he's going to be doing it twice. Um, this is kind of an odd one for me because it was that kind of thing of like I was like who I just like literally just had this kind of thing <laughs> of like I don't re it's like I don't really know who that was, and I had to go and look it up. Oh, I'm I'm a huge fan of Alan Menken. He's basically written the music for basically every single song for a movie in the Disney Renaissance, which was basically my childhood. So, yeah. oh, I definitely knew who he was. Well, I think that's the thing, isn't it? I think with, like, obviously those kind of um, music and thing, and anyone working behind the scenes, in certain, certain sort of people get more attention than others. And, you know, if you're paying attention stuff, uh, uh, like the Renaissance and stuff... For me, I was a little bit older. I wasn't really paying as much attention. You know, obviously I knew, like, um, like uh, I would, by the time, like, 
Lion King and Toy Story stuff, they were at the end of it. But that whole period, I wasn't really into the Disney movies because of my age at the time. So right. I think that was a thing of never really paying as much attention to those. Obviously, the music is kind of one of those things of you recognize all of those classics so easily. And I think this is going to be a great treat. I know he's like, so the fact that they're putting them on twice shows how popular he's going to be. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to be at that show. I will say that one. They are doing it twice, which is going to give me a great opportunity to go see the um, a different panel. So, although that's the only panel that day, so yeah. never mind. <laughs> the, I know I'm going to be honest. Now, obviously, as a video game fan, um, last time there was a D23 Expo, there was a fantastic panel. Um, they gave out special Disney Infinity um, badges or um little um, discs to everyone. There we had updates on Battlefront, Kingdom Hearts, Disney Infinity, etc. And for me as a video game fan, I'm actually a little, I was a little bit disappointed that there was no presentation kind of showing off all the new video games coming out. Because to me, video games are actually more, they I generally would have more to do with video games than with the parks or some, probably even the movies. I spend more time with that. So they're not being at the event because they franchised everything out again. I was a little bit like, oh, well, that's that's a shame because they've got so many new Met games coming out this year. Um, personally, that was a little bit of a disappointment. Oh, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I um, I was a little intrigued by the fact that there was no video game panel, mm. especially I wanted some Kingdom Hearts news. Yes, <laughs> it def- it's just that kind of thing. I think sometimes, especially like with Disney, is... The trouble is when, when they brought everything in-house, they kind of had a little bit more control. Now they've gone back to franchising everything out. The big problem, really, I think, is... I think the, maybe the people that are running the company maybe don't quite grasp kind of video games as much as they understand with films. Um, and they've, they've, they've done some really... They've sort of sucked sometimes at doing video games. And so they've never got the, quite the, the confidence that they have to invest in it. And when they do... If it doesn't work, they just pull the plug and run away and send it back. So it is a shame. That's my only thing that was a little bit of a gripe from that on there um, because that was a major part of D23 um, last time was watching the watching the panel on Periscope and kind of all the new announcements for video games. That was probably one of the ones that personally maybe affected me more than all the other ones. Yeah, I mean, you know, I feel like it may have something to do with Disney Infinity as well because I think that was kind of their big draw. Yeah. And once they got rid of it, they really didn't have anything to no. show, unless they have been so focused on their films that they haven't really put their yeah. foot back into video games. No, I mean, I, I'm expecting E3, we'll find out a little bit more about other video games and stuff, but I always think it's good from like that weekend, a bit like with Star Wars Celebration, where they can get out a lot of press and a lot of attention on their different titles, because nobody, nobody else is doing it that week, um, because that's their own weekend. But that's my own little issue on that. But generally, parks and the movies are my two main ones that I'm looking forward to um, finding out a lot more about. I'd probably say even the, the live-action one, probably more so because of the Star Wars and Marvel movies. Yeah, that's kind of the only reason I'm going. That and, like, The Lion King. That's Once I heard the cast for that, I was I, that was it. I'm going. I'm seeing. I don't care who's... I just want to go. But <laughs> Yeah, see, my, my, my instant reaction was, oh, really, Seth Rogen. It's like, they're going to give him... I don't know. It's, if he's bound to get some... So, sort of dope joke in there at some point, because um, <laughs> that's how I know I really don't want a sausage party kind of type <laughs> movie with this. One. Um, but generally, um, yeah, the Lion King one's a bit of a funny one for me because having seen the Jungle Book, I'm a little bit like, Can you do something original, please. Just stop like remaking stuff and just do something fresh. Um, but that's my yeah. Own, but that's my gripe with the whole kind of panels or the whole thing with Disney with them live actions but that's my own personal thoughts on that one yeah well we'll see I'm, I'm, yeah. All, I'm excited for all the panels to be yeah honest, well, you so would I'm be because you're, you're going so I can <laughs> yeah yeah when you're just streaming it live or you know when you're just watching and watching what everyone's doing and also um, I'm grateful of the fact that some of these are a little bit earlier um, I like the fact that we have the what was it the live action ones and the uh, is like in the in the morning for me because three o'clock time is going to be late evening. I know what's going to happen that night. I'm going to be sat there like midnight waiting for the news to drop out of what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's going to be the issue for me. Oh well, I'm glad the times work out for you. They work out for me too because yeah. the time difference. It, I'm going like three hours behind my actual time zone. Yeah. So. 
I'm going to be very tired. <laughs> yeah, so it should be good. But no, obviously we'll have a lot more on the D23 Expo nearer and obviously during the event and after it. So um, let us know what you guys are looking forward to hearing at these panels. As per usual, guys, you can always um, follow, like us, or subscribe to whatever different platform you are watching or listening on. And where can they find you, Victoria? They can find me on Twitter at he calls me PP and Instagram he calls me Pineapple Princess. And on that note, guys, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you guys soon. Later. Bye.